Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make the Latin flavored chili that we call chicken tortilla soup. It's really flavorful. It comes together in about 25 to 30 minutes and it's super easy to make. This is weeknighting. The first step here is to cut some aromatic vegetables for the base of this soup. For that, I've got a peeled red onion here that I cut parallel to the equator about five or six times like this. Then I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees and cut it crosswise to get something that approximates a medium dice. The result here is more rustic than the traditional three-step way you're used to seeing on cooking television, but it's a lot faster, it uses the whole onion, and overall, it's just a perfect method for a weeknight. The next vegetable is gonna be one poblano pepper. I'll chop the top off, the seeds are in there and I don't really want those in the soup. Then I'm gonna cut the pepper open like a Book and then flip it over and press it down like this. That's gonna make cutting strips a lot easier. You could sub in a green or red bell pepper here if you don't want as much heat in the final dish. Or if you wanna be a tough guy chili head, of course, you could just use jalapenos instead. Once these poblanos are cut into a relatively similar size as the onion, there's one last bit of knife work here and that's to smash, peel, and chop four large cloves of garlic. You certainly could press these through the garlic press if you wanted to make it easy, but in this soup, I prefer to keep the garlic chunky so that I can get nice pops of sweet, tender garlic in some of the bites. Once these veggies are prepped, I'm gonna grab my six and a half quart Dutch oven and preheat that at the stove over medium heat. Once that's warmed up, I'm gonna add in 35 grams or about two tablespoons of olive oil and let that get hot as well. Once it is, in goes the onions and poblanos that we just cut up, then a nice big pinch of salt and then I'm gonna stir everything up to combine. In this first step, the goal here is to soften the onions and peppers nicely, but also to develop a dark, lightly caramelized flavor base for this soup. After about five minutes or so, these onions and poblanos should be taking on some good color and the bottom of that pot should start to get glazed up with some caramelized fond. Now in goes my chopped garlic and I'm gonna stir that in to combine with everything else. I'm gonna give that garlic just about a minute to get acclimated to the heat and once it's smelling aromatic and starting to take on some color like this, I'm gonna add in 20 grams of chili powder, five grams of paprika, five grams of ground cumin, and two grams of dried oregano. That's gonna get stirred in and combined and from here, I'm gonna dry toast these spices with the aromatics for about 30 seconds or so or until you can really smell the sweet smoky chili powder filling the room. Next in is 1500 grams or about one and a half liters of chicken stock and if you don't have any homemade stuff on hand, that's totally fine. I'm gonna explain how we can make this more flavorful in just a second. Next in is one 28 ounce can or 790 grams of diced tomatoes, juices and all. Behind the tomatoes comes one can of kidney beans that I have not drained because bean water in moderation brings a really nice viscosity to soups. One can of black beans that I have drained and then a generous pinch of salt goes in because at the pro level, we season food as we go instead of all at once at the end. From here, I'm gonna bring everything up to a boil then turn my heat down down to low and reduce this pot to a simmer and let it cook for about 10 minutes while I get the chicken part of this chicken tortilla soup sorted out. For that, I've got a store-bought rotisserie chicken, also known as the best food shortcut known to man of all time. They're cheap, they're good enough, and they make the soup way easier to produce on a weeknight. When I pull it out of the bag, you're gonna notice a bunch of gunk stuck to it. Keep that stuff. We call that chicken gold in the business, and it's just the drippings from the chicken that have solidified from all of the collagen in the bird. This stuff is extremely flavorful, and it's gonna be really useful in making our soup base taste more chickeny. Scrape it off, then load it into the simmering soup. The more you've got, the better. Now for the chicken, I'm gonna peel off and then chop half of this bird. That's one breast and one leg thigh combo in total. If you had a big pot and wanted to make a double batch though, you could use the whole chicken. As for the other half, I really recommend throwing it on salads or maybe it's your protein for a weeknight fried rice. Link in description if you're interested to learn how to make fried rice. And once I've got half this chicken pulled here, I'm gonna load the other half back into the fridge, then give this stuff a double chop to make it more spoon friendly in the soup. You might have noticed that I've kept all the skin on this chicken and that's because I'm bad and I really dig having a bunch of skin in my soup. But if you're not a skin guy or gal, you go ahead and leave it out. Once this chicken's been chopped into pieces that make sense for a spoon, I'm gonna set it aside and then check back on my soup base. It's been simmering over here for about 10 minutes and the veggies have gotten nice and soft and everything has gotten a little bit more concentrated. But it's still really watery and I hate that. Store-bought stock is fine, but really not strong enough to fully stand alone. So I've devised a plan to make the background part of this soup a lot more flavorful. So scoop about two cups of this stuff out of the pot and into the empty diced tomato can. That means broth, beans, tomatoes, the whole deal. Back at the cutting board, I'm gonna add in two pieces of canned chipotle chilies in adobo. By the way, chipotles in adobo are just smoked and then dried jalapenos sitting in a savory, smoky tomato-based sauce. 
They're a really wonderful pantry item. And now is where things get interesting. I'm gonna grab my immersion blender and puree these chilies in with the soup base until it's relatively smooth like this. The combo of the chilies, the beans, and the onions and tomato broth all spun up is gonna bring more viscosity to the soup, which is a good thing, but it's also gonna raise the depth of flavor in the background of the soup quite a bit, and you know that's dope. Up next is 150 grams of frozen corn. Frozen corn is kind of like an underdog ingredient in general. It, I always have them on hand because they're kind of like frozen peas in that they're super versatile and just an all around great frozen vegetable. Behind the corn, I'm gonna slide in the chopped half chicken from before, but use your judgment on the total amount of chicken here. If you got your bird from a place that also sells big screen TVs, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it's pretty big and that you probably need less than a half. Once it's all stirred up, I'm gonna let that simmer over low heat for about five to 10 more minutes while we prep up all of our garnishes. Like I said, I look at this dish like it's chili, so I'm going to top it as such. First topping is gonna to be some nice diced avocado. For that, I chose a really soft, really ripe avocado, then sliced it top to bottom, then side to side, and then used a spoon to scoop everything out. And there we go, diced avocado is gonna bring a really interesting fatty creaminess to this dish that is quite different from sour cream. I've also got some tortilla chips ready to go as a garnish here as well. I went for a really thick, hearty taqueria style tortilla chip that's gonna hold the wetness in this soup a lot better than a thin one. It's almost gonna be like chilaquiles. I've also got some chopped cilantro at the ready here, and for that I just removed the bottom stems and then ran my knife through it twice to keep it nice and loose. Cheese-wise, pretty much anything will work well, but I feel like aged white cheddar is a good call because the salty, round funkiness that it has brings some maturity to this soup that's gonna stand out and bring some interesting contrast to that acidic, smoky broth. The last garnish here is sour cream. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes of cook time since we started making this soup, and now it's time to check in and see what we're working with. As you can see, the background of the soup has a nice, thick viscosity to it with plenty of body, and within that broth is a good balance of flavors and textures. Overall, it's thicker than soup and thinner than chili. Now, the last mile of seasoning for soups and chilies is very important. A perfectly executed soup can be really bland without the proper amount of salt to bring it into balance, so I'm gonna taste this and think about it and deliberate and I think this needs a strong pinch to finish it off. Stir that in, let it dissolve, then give it another taste. Think on it. We're there. You guys, chicken tortilla soup, when made with care, is just as craveable and comforting as any other cold weather food. It really has it all. It's savory, a little bit sweet. It has an incredible depth of flavor, and it's full of dark, smoky mystery, just like chili, but it's less of a gut bomb. I love the variety of textures here as well. One minute you get a fully saturated chip that's a little bit crisp, a little bit soggy. Then you get a fully creamed out bite with sour cream and avocado that has a ton of funky cheesiness to it. Overall, it's just a super quick, satisfying bowl of food that I hope gets a spot on your weeknight roster soon. Let's eat this thing.